Tonight, we're going to introduce you to the focus and directrix of a parabola. And so over the last couple of years, going back to Algebra 1, you've put a considerable amount of energy into graphing parabolas. Uh, but hidden beneath the, the surface were a lot of other components, and there was a lot of other things working together. And tonight, we're going to focus on finding every parabola's fo focus as well as its directrix. So when you think of all the parabolas you've graphed up to this point in your life, they all had a focus. We just didn't talk about it. And they all had a directrix. Same thing, we didn't talk about it. Now we'll create a formal definition here in a second. But the bottom line is that a parabola is a collection of points. And on this parabola, we'd say theoretically there's an infinite number of points. And every one of those random points is equidistant from both the focus as well as the directrix. So you'll notice the, the uh, symbols that you might have used in geometry, these little slash marks, to indicate that this line segment is congruent to this line segment. Or I could pick this random point right here and say he's equidistant. The distance from here to the focus is equal to the distance from that point to the directrix as well. Let's see if we can create some formal definitions to get in our notebook, and then we'll spend the majority of the rest of the video trying to interpret these definitions and put them into action. So a parabola is a collection of all points. We said there's an infinite number of points that are equidistant and that's a real fancy word, equidistant. It basically means the distances are equal, equidistant, from a fixed point, we'll call that the focus, and a fixed line that we're about to call the directrix. So just to clarify, the fixed point is called the focus, and the fixed line on every parabola is called the directrix. Coincidentally, just for fun, we'll mention the directrix is always perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. I've imported the same picture we had on the opening slide just because I think it's such a great picture. And so we want to identify, notice how the vertex is right in the middle of the focus in the directrix. Or sometimes we'll say the vertex is the midpoint of those two. And so let's get that in a sentence. The vertex is always halfway, we'll say, halfway between the focus and the directrix. And of course, mathematically, we're claiming that it's the midpoint. And now, what we'll say here is the focus is always on the interior of the parabola. Now, what in the world does it mean to be on the interior of a parabola? Well, it depends on which way the parabola is opening. So in this case, with this parabola opening up, anything in this space right here is the interior, and then anything on the outside here is considered the exterior. So what I'll do is I'll put a capital I for interior and a capital E for exterior. And that's where we'll pick up right here. The directrix is always, always going to be on the exterior of a parabola. So we've got all our definitions out of the way, and we're just going to spend the rest of the video trying to interpret those definitions. And so we've got a really nice picture of a parabola here that opens up. And we've got, we've been given the directrix here on this blue line right here. And we're going to try to identify the vertex, the focus, and the directrix in any order you want. Now I do say any order, but let me suggest this. I feel more comfortable always finding the vertex first if possible. And I notice it's right here. That's the turning point. And the ordered pair right there looks like it's going to be 3, 4. Okay, again, just starting at the origin, I went to the right three units, and I climbed up four units. There's my vertex. Now what you'll notice here is that this blue line, it's a horizontal line, so I'm going to describe it in terms of y equals, and we'll say y equals 2. And what we've got here is we've got a distance of, looks like, 2 units. Okay, And so because by definition the vertex has to be the midpoint of the directrix and the focus, then I'm just going to continue to climb 2 units right here, and that's my focus, because again, that's another 2 units. And that would then put the vertex right in the middle. They're halfway between them. And the ordered pair of that vertex looks to be 3, 6. So we've got the coordinates of our vertex, our focus, and the equation of the line known as our directrix. So I've got a little curveball for you here. We're still, the directions are the same. Identify the vertex, the focus, and the directrix. But what's special about this parabola, you'll notice, is that it opens up to, towards the right direction. Um, and then our directrix in this case would be vertical instead of horizontal. But we're going to stick to the same group of definitions and try to follow those. And I'm going to try to find, as I mentioned in the last slide, my comfort zone is to try to find the vertex first, where the turning point. And that looks like to be negative 6, comma, negative 3. And then what we could say is this vertical line right here, 
appears to be at x equals negative 9. The distance between the vertex and the directrix appears to be 3 units. And so what I'm going to do is then I'm going to move to 3 units. There's 1, there's 2, and there's the third one. So there's my focus. That's on the interior. There's another 3 units. And it looks like my focus is at negative 3 comma negative 3 and we just need to check and always make sure that the vertex is in the middle halfway between our directrix and our focus. And this problem instead of giving us a nice graph to work with we're gonna to have to create parts of it ourselves and what we've been given here is we've been given the focus in the directrix and then from there we're gonna to try to sketch the parabola and in the process identify its vertex and that's our big end goal is at the end of this problem we want to walk away knowing the vertex so our focus is going to be at 4, 1. We'll try to get that bear plotted. Appears to be right there. And then the, the directrix is at y equals negative 1, which would be this line right here. So what I know is halfway between those two has got to be the vertex. And so I'm going to put the vertex right there. That's one unit below the focus and one unit above the directrix. And so my parabola might swoop through here in this fashion something like that, where every point is equidistant from the focus and the directrix. But the bottom line is right there, that location of that vertex, and that's going to be, we'll say the vertex is at 4, 0, and it's halfway between the focus and the directrix. This, this problem is very similar to the last one, where they're going to give us the focus, they're going to give us the directrix, and we want to try to identify the vertex. Um, the only curveball is the, the directrix, it says x equals 1 instead of y equals 1. So that's going to create a little bit of a curveball. But let's start with our focus, and we'll go ahead and we'll try to graph negative 3, 2, which will put us in this ballpark right here, and we'll identify that as f. And then x equals 1 is going to be right here. And so what we've got is we've got a parabola that's opening to the left, believe it or not. Now, as far as finding the midpoint, the midpoint, and sometimes what you could do is you could take the x-coordinate here if you're having trouble with midpoint and basically add the x-coordinate of the focus and your directrix together and divide by 2 and that's like you're finding the average. And so that tells you at x equals negative 1, which would be right there, is where the vertex goes. And so my parabola would look something like this. Real nice and smooth, a little better than the last one I drew. And those or that ordered pair right there would say the vertex is at negative 1, comma 2. Slight variation here. This time they're giving me the vertex, which I didn't have in the last two problems, and they're giving me the focus, and then this time we're going to try to identify the directrix. Everything we do tonight is always going to go back to the fact that this vertex has got to be halfway between the focus and the directrix. And if that's the only thing you remember going into tomorrow, you're going to be in pretty darn good shape. So anyway, let's see if we can graph the vertex first, and that would put us right here, put a little v, and then the focus is going to be negative 2, 0, which is right here. Now remember, the parabola is always going to go right through the vertex, and I know it's going to open upwards because we defined earlier that the focus has to be on the interior of the graph, and so maybe my parabola swoops like this. What that would do is that would force my directrix now what you'll note, let me say this, the distance between the focus and the directrix is exactly two units, so I'm going to drop another two units, and that's going to put my directrix right here at y equals negative four, and that's all you need to do. I think by now it's a great chance to maybe try this one on your own really quick, and then come on back and see if you have the same directrix as I have. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot my vertex, which is going to put me right here at 3, negative 1. And then my focus is going to be at 6, negative 1, way up here. Now remember, the focus has got to be on the interior of the parabola. So I know that the parabola is going to open in this manner right here. It's going to open towards the right. The distance between that vertex and the focus is 3 units. So I'm going to drop back another 3 units in that direction. And it's going to put me right here at 0. And so... I know that the directrix in this case is right on top of the y-axis, and we will identify that as x equals 0. Now remember this. If it's a vertical line, you're always going to start the equation with x, and if it's a horizontal line, 
you're always going to start the equation with y. So that'll help you with your directrices a little bit. Okay, so what did they give me this time? They gave me the vertex again, and they gave me the directrix. And, of, and then what's missing is the focus. Now, may, maybe make a note here that the directrix has always got to be on the exterior of the parabola. That's going to help me sketch these a little bit better. The vertex puts me right here at 4, 2. And the directrix is going to be at y equals 4. So I'll drop that right here. And what that tells me is that the parabola is going to open down because it's, got to, it's always going to open away from the directrix. Maybe that's a better way of saying it instead of being, you know, instead of saying the directrix is on the exterior, we could say that the parabola always opens away from the directrix. And the distance, let's say from here to here, looks like two units. So I'm going to drop another two units, and that puts the focus right here on the x-axis. And we'll say the focus is at 4, 0. All right, another good example to try on your own. So I encourage you to hit the pause button and try to see if you can come up with your own focus for this particular parabola. I'm going to put my focus right here at 0, 2. And then the directrix is way back here at x equals negative 3. And so let's see. I know the parabola has got to pass through the vertex, and it's got to open away from the directrix. So that's going to make it swoop and open towards the right side. So we'll draw something like this. Let's check out these distances. The distance from the directrix up to that vertex looks like three units. So I'm going to move another three units in this direction. And that's going to put me right here at x equals three. And it looks like, let's see, the x coordinate's three, and it looks like the y coordinate's a two. So the focus at three, two. All right, we saved the two nastiest bears for last. So we're coming down the home stretch. And what you'll notice about the quadratic function that's been given to us is it's in what form? We're going to call that standard form. Anything that's in, you know, I guess standard would be anything that looks like y equals ax squared plus bx, whoops, plus c, that's an x right there, would be considered standard form. Now what we want to do is we want to try to rewrite the quadratic in, you guessed it, vertex form, and in an effort to identify the vertex. And we're going to do that by completing the square. So it'll be a really, really good review from the other night. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to separate the C term. Basically, I'm going to keep the first two terms, the A term and now the B term. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave some spaces and then I'll throw the C term down here at the end. And those spaces are really special. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take half of this b term, which is 3, and then square that to create 9. And I'm going to add 9, and then I'm also going to subtract 9 to balance it out. And at this point, I've completed the square. And I want to group the first three terms together. I think those parentheses are a great move to help you visualize and organize the perfect trinomial. And as we factor this perfect trinomial, we're trying to think of two numbers that add up to 6 and multiply to 9. And if we do it correctly, it should always be half of this 6 right here, which it is, because 3 plus 3 is 6, and 3 times 3 is 9. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to combine these two like terms and create minus 5. Let's see. And then we could say y equals the quantity x plus 3 squared minus 5, which then tells me that the vertex of the parabola is, we're going to negate that 3, and then keep negative 5 as is. And then what if, now the directions at the top also mention that we're going to give you the directrix. And so I'm going to tell you that the directrix is at y equals negative 6. Maybe I'll, I'll write that out, directrix. And so can you use the vertex and this directrix to try to find the focus? So let's try to find the focus now. And I'm going to grab a little piece of graph paper to do this. So on my graph paper, I went ahead and plotted my vertex here at negative 3, negative 5, and I also graphed my directrix at y equals negative 6. And I'm expecting my parabola to kind of open upwards in, in an effort to open away from that directrix. And so if I was to sketch this, it might look a little something like this. That's not too bad. I've certainly drawn worse than that. But anyway, what you want to focus on is this distance we've created between the vertex and directrix, and it looks like it's one unit. So we're going to climb. We know the focus has to be on the interior, so it looks like we're going to go one unit above the vertex, and that's going to, I'm going to say my focus is right at negative 3, negative 4.
boom, that's all there is to it. Now make sure you grab your calculator for this one because we're definitely going to use the calculator. It's great review um, with the finding the, the max or min feature on the calculator that we probably haven't done in a little while. So great review. And the, the most important thing with the calculator is that you actually follow along and, and, and execute these steps on the calculator yourself and uh, it'll sh you'll really show tomorrow. So the, we could find the vertex by completing the square, but in this case, because the five's odd, completing the square would get rather ugly, and they said we could use the calculator. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go right to y equals, and when I hit y equals, I just said that y1 was going to be this x, this x squared plus 5x function. And when I went ahead and graphed it, let's see, I just did a zoom standard window, and the parabola looks a little bit like this. It looks like it has roots or zeros at, at 0 and negative 5 is what it appears to have. But I'm not worried about the zeros or the x-intercepts today. What I'm worried about is this vertex right here. I want to find the vertex. And so what I did is I went, I hit second calc, uh, or second trace, whatever you want to call it. It's going to take you to the calc menu. And in this case, we want to use the, we want to find the minimum feature. Minimum this time. And the first thing the calculator asks is for um, a left bound. And I'm going to set that in this neighborhood right here. And then I'm going to hit the right arrow, move the cursor over to the right bound. And as far as the guess goes, I'm not even going to move it left or right at all. I'm just going to hit enter again. And what it's going to do is it's going to spit out, it's going to tell me that the vertex is, has an x-coordinate of negative 2.5, and it's going to have a y-coordinate of negative 6.25. And that's the vertex right there. Now they also said, can you find the focus if we were given the directrix? And in this case, we'll say that the directrix is at y equals negative 7. So let's see if we can sketch that. That would put me just below that vertex right here at y equals negative 7. Now, the distance between the vertex and your directrix in this case is going to be about 0.75 units. And in order to get that, I'm just subtracting um, these two values right here, the y coordinates. And so what I want to do is I want to go about 0.75 units above that vertex. Okay? And so I'm going to add 0.75 to this number right here. And that's going to give me, let's say, that's going to put the focus. The x-coordinate would still be negative 2.5. But if I add 0.75 to a negative 6.25, I think it's going to be negative 5.5. And that's worth checking on the calculator. 